Good day. This is Greg Lewis, the city manager of Lebanon. And I can't tell you how pleased I am today of having this very special guest with us today. And Max is with us today. And uh, we're going to have an uh, officer from our fine K-9 unit uh, introduce Max and talk about him. Jeremy, why don't you give, provide us your name and so people are, know you. Know you. Uh, my name's uh, Senior Officer Jeremy Perkins uh, with the Lebanon Police Department. This is K-9 Max. He's a uh, four and a half year old Belgian Malinois. Um, came to us uh, about three and a half years ago, and uh, he's been a great asset. He is quite a dog. I mean, I'm, I'm a real dog lover, as I told you, Jeremy, and uh, he is so delightful. Um, and where is he from again? Uh, Max is originally from Holland. Oh. Um, he was imported over here um, about a month before we got mm -hmm. him. Um, and uh, like I said, he's just been a great dog. Great companion. I know he's a special partner for you. What makes Max special? Well, what Max can do for, for me and for the city is, um, is a lot. Um, he helps keep um, other officers and myself safe um, when it comes to things like searching buildings, um, trying to apprehend or, or find um, su suspects when they flee a crime, or, you know, if we're looking for um, um, people who are lost. Uh, Max has had a couple of, of great finds where we've had to track people who have been lost in the woods. Oh, that's amazing. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, these dogs can do things that as we as humans can't do. My job is just to watch him and kind of figure out what he's thinking. That is just amazing. You know, I, I think I saw a, a public TV special a while back on, on dogs and their special senses, that, they, that their senses are so, so extraordinary and that most people don't realize what senses they have. Obviously, Max is one of those extraordinary dogs. He is. Um, you know, one of the things he also does is, uh, you know, he helps uh, locate and detect narcotics. Um, so it's another tool that we have in the city that um, it helps keep our streets clean and helps keep narcotics off the street. That is wonderful. He is so alert, isn't he? He is, he is uh, so alert. He is always on the ball. He is really a hard charger. He, he's just, he's taking his whole studio in and... Uh, I think to have a dog like this in our community to help protect us and keep the streets clean and, and help protect our officers, it's, a, it's, it's really a wonderful occasion. And I, I'm, really, I'm really proud that you're, Max is here today. Now, we're not going to keep Max too long on camera today. Um, and, and Jeremy, is there anything else we should uh, make uh, uh, known about Max before we uh, have a little respite? Um, I think it's just important to note that it's obvious that he looks a little different than, than say, a German Shepherd. He does um, look a little different. Eh? Which is what most people, when they think about police dogs, is what they think about. Um, we do have another canine unit in Lebanon. It's Officer John Tracy and his, his partner, Canine Cody. Uh -huh. um, um, they're a great team as well. Um, like I said, Cody's a German Shepherd. Max is a Belgian Malinois. Um, these, these Mallies, as they're called, um, they're the Shepherd family. They're just a little bit smaller, a uh -huh. little bit leaner, uh -huh. a little bit more agile um, than the average German Shepherd doesn't mean the German Shepherds are, aren't awesome dogs because they are. Um, it's just that um, the Malinois have a little bit longer working life and, um, you know, we, we're, we're thrilled to have Max. That, that's really wonderful. And what we'll do now is I think we're going we're to pause in our tape and then Jeremy and I are going to talk more about the canine unit and what its operations are. And we're going we're gonna to let this, this wonderful, wonderful dog of ours in protecting our community, have a little respite while we finish our discussion here in this first segment. Uh, Jeremy's with me. Uh, we have Max out resting. Although I don't know if Rex, Max rests. <laughs> he was incredible. He showed a ball he, just off camera a little bit. He, he had a ball, and uh, I know, you know he he and it was amazingly quick to grab his ball. He was like fastest thing since lightning. So, um, so I'll talk to us a little bit, Jeremy, about yourself a little bit. Uh, how? What's your background? How did you get in the police work? And then how did you get in the canine unit work? Uh, I joined the Navy, um, the United States Navy. I was in the Navy during uh, the 90s. Uh, when I was discharged from the Navy, um, I'm originally from Maryland. Um, I became a police officer in Maryland. Um, was there for eight and a half years as a police officer in the Baltimore, Washington area. Uh, when I left there, um, I came to Lebanon. Um, my wife is originally from New Hampshire, oh, okay. so um, that's how I ended up here. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, it's been a good fit. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm good. We're so happy to have you here. Thanks for all your service with both the military and the police. Um, well, how did you get in the canine unit? I mean, where did that come from? I mean, you'd always think, well, I'm going to be a police officer. And I want to, not only that, I'm going to be a canine unit member. <laughs> did that happen out uh, of? For me, um, canine is really the only specialty that I've ever really um, 
was, was, was a passion of mine and something that I wanted to do. It has a lot to do with some of the things I saw in Maryland, mm -hmm. um, some, of the, some of the canine units down there. Um, you know, the day I knew I wanted to be canine was, um, was the day we had a robbery and um, the, the suspect had barricaded himself in a building and there was 20 armed policemen outside and he didn't want to come out. Uh, but as soon as he heard the dog barking, he immediately um, discarded his gun and came out with his hands up and said he wanted no part of that canine. So mm -hmm. just seeing the deterrent and how, mm -hmm. how canines can be used in a positive way kept all those officers safe. Um, there was no mm -hmm. um, cause for gunfight or anything like that, yeah. and everybody went home safely. That's incredible. Now, well, what does the canine unit do? I think we see them, and I know there's a great deal of presence when they're around, but... Could you tell the public uh, about what the canine unit does during a regular course of a week? What, what kind of activities the canine units engage in? Uh, we're constantly training. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's a constant. Um, daily, whether I'm on duty or off duty. Um, it, it's not only for, for Max, it's also for me because the two of us have to be sharp together. Hmm. Um, but Damn. we also, we also um, you know, the, the majority of the calls and service that we handle um, have to do with um, business alarms, home alarms, residential stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, we also do a lot with um, demonstrations in the public. We want, to, we want the public to, to know that we have these tools and that uh, you know, it's, their tax money is going to a good place. That's excellent, that's excellent. Um, has there been, is, like has Max been involved in some particular um, situations that we could share with the public? Uh, Max has been involved in a lot of, of uh, tracks. Okay. Um, we, we've tracked everything from a, um, an intoxicated sub subject who was down the Queechee Gorge for several hours, wow. um, got lost, um, and we were able to track him and find him about two and a half, three miles back in the gorge, which was amazing. Um, oh, wow. uh, the, the, so the, that, that particular um, person was going into hypothermia at the time. Mm, mm -hmm. um, so Max, I, I think, uh, did a great job and could have saved that man's life. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've also had tracks for um, criminal subjects. Okay. Um, so that have been successful. So what's nice is it's a great tool that we have that, again, keeps our officers safe, but also keeps our public safe. Yeah, that's, that's really great. Now, is Max around with you? Are you 24-7-365 with Max? I mean, is he around you all the time? Are you around him all the time? Pretty much. Okay. Pretty much. Okay. I see Max probably more than I do my wife and my two kids. Oh, wow. Well, how's he fit with the family? Is he around the family? Or uh, he's, he's great. He's, uh, he's great with my wife. He's great with family, and you know I have a core group of friends that, that are normally around, and, and Max is great with them. You know, it's it's one of those things where you know he's not the average pet. Yeah. So when no, new people come into our mm -hmm. our world, um, you know, it just takes a little mm -hmm. time. But Max Max um, just likes to know that they're a safe person yeah. to be in our world. Yeah. Well, he seems real professional. You know, I look at him. He sees, boy, he just smacks the profession. He's he's got stature. He's got charisma. He's got alertness. He's he's ready. He's you know, I always said that there's, there's four Fs, fast, flexible, focused, and he's friendly. You know, he, he didn't, you know, he, I'm sure that he can, you know, uh, uh, you know respond in a different manner. But, but in, in with your presence and your control uh, and relationship with him, that he was very, very well-mannered. Uh, we make a point to, to get him out in the public, too. I mean, it's important for us to be out there, you know, not only for, um, for us to be seen out there as a team, but also it's... It's good for the public to be able to come and see and, and, and touch and pet Max. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we do a lot of stuff in Colburn Park. Oh, uh, okay. We'll go out and walk around there as well as the mall area. Um, and and, and it's, it's also a great deterrent for crime. Yes. Um, if, if a person who is up to no good sees that we have um, that tool that's out and around, they're less likely to want to do something, um, mm -hmm. do something wrong. So we're kind of community policing, we're proactive, we're in the community. Uh, we have a wonderful companion uh, as a team member in our, in our professional approach to protecting the public and serving the public. And there's Max and yourself working team in tandem uh, on, on, on these various matters. Uh, uh, any other areas you'd like to, sh to share about the unit? Um, uh, any uh, uh, things yeah. that you think we should make sure the public's aware of? You know, it, there's not much that the Canine Max and I don't get involved in okay. as far as as far as um, police work goes. Um, the great thing about having these canines is, again, they're they're out there keeping our our, our streets um, clean of drugs. Um, they're also out there um, protecting us, um, you know, as far as like uh, break-ins and stuff like that. Um, 
robberies, stuff like that. It, it, it helps us deter crime. It also helps us when those crimes do occur that we have that tool to deploy um, to uh, hopefully put an end to whatever we're dealing with. That's nice. I mean, that's that's really and and so we pray, we have a good future looking ahead for our canine unit. You know, Lebanon is is, is extremely lucky. They have two canines, um, uh, two good handlers, and. Uh, you know, it's it's and and now um, our Max and I are a part of our tactical team, um, so you know we're we're also being used for those purposes too. Again, it's a new team. It's uh, mm -hmm. and you'll have Corp Corporal Smolinski that you'll be talking to about that at a later yes, date. Yes, we're looking forward to that. Um, but K9 Max and I are going to be a part of help keeping those members safe in the situations that they come across. Well, Officer and Jeremy, I want to thank you for being here today. I want to thank you for bringing Max. I want to thank you and Max for your service. And uh, I think everyone should, you know, realize what a wonderful asset we have in our community to have teams like uh, like we have here with Jeremy and Max and our other uh, fine units. So, welcome to the second segment. I thought that first one was a lot of fun uh, having Max, our 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 police officer Max here as our canine. Uh, one thing that we did mention after the after that last segment was that that unit also helps other communities who don't have dog units. So just uh, that should be a note to be made that uh, Lebanon is real proud of being a sharing community and so shares our canine unit with other uh, communities as well. Quite a, quite a good police force we have. Um, speaking of sharing, you know, we've shared an effort about the flood, um, which was the result of that tropical storm and all the, the various sundry things that occurred. Um, and I wanted to, in this segment, to address the flood a little bit, um, and the, which was all caused by the tropical storm, and what went on maybe behind the scenes, um, and then maybe at the end, or the, I will touch on the, the 2012 budget for you. Um, first of all, the flood, uh, as we approached that tropical storm, I guess everyone started watching. Uh, if a, we, for those who are storm watchers, uh, you'd be watching as it came in from the ocean and it came in to hit land and as it became more clear that it was going to uh, come into the New England area and it was also going to come up the, uh, basically up the, up the valley, uh, up into Vermont and up into New Hampshire. Um, our uh, city of Lebanon has some, a, a really uh, a good teamwork approach. They have a, have a, an emergency operation plan uh, that has been um, exercised. Exercise means that the plan Lebanon has uh, has been actually uh, played out in scenarios by our team members from um, from the Lebanon city departments. The fire department is a, is a great lead for us, uh, and uh, they have been working on this plan and uh, developed it and exercised it. Equally, uh, the police department is right in there, um, and the police officers are just incredible, uh, being to the scene in such you know pretty pretty difficult circumstances. And the public works uh, department are out there, and and so the, with the Wednesday before the arrival of of the aftermath of Hurricane uh, Eileen into Tropical Storm, Eileen was our meeting. Our, our people started meeting on Wednesday and it was, that was before actually the event was going to start rolling out here and it kind of whipped in here on Sunday. So our people were talking on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I was getting, I got briefs from them. Um, they kept me advised as to the fact that they have a plan. They're going to follow the plan. They're going to evoke the plan, evoke the operation center on, uh, upon its arrival. I guess they they they, pre, they predicted that it was going to be accompanied by heavy rain, and there was also going to be some wind. So there was expected to be flooding um, and damage from water, and there was expected to be some wind that would might blow down some trees and some cross some power lines. And so the the the, the thought at the time was the heavy rain might cause flooding, and 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 appeared to be on the way to causing flooding, and the wind would cause us to have outages. Uh, so uh, we had pre-placed our resources, which i.e. our people. Uh, the fire had lined up its crew, uh, the police had lined up what was on their station, uh, the public works had brought in their crew, uh, they had set the uh, operation center, which is um, a center that's operated out of the fire department, and uh, there's a lot of communication over there. And they, over the weekend, they planned for it, and when it did arrive here on uh, Sunday, uh, they opened that operation center and away they went. 
Um, they were really good about responding to the event as it unfolded and its twists and turns uh, as to where it would go. Water is a very powerful force and can go any which way direction. It can, and so they found themselves with a great deal of water. And of course, here we are, the river community uh, with our rivers, with three rivers, uh, uh, Muscoma and the Great Connecticut and of course the White River coming into our area. Uh, and all the water is so, was so intense and so strong and so fast coming down. And then as it comes down off steep slope areas or slope areas, you could see immediately the volume and velocity of the water washing away things. Um, and, and, the, and so our people began responding to such matters as, as roads. The, the, as, uh, we had several roads actually uh, be washed out. And there was also a couple houses in jeopardy. Um, there also was, was water coming down the rivers and it was affecting um, by sw sweeping along some, some different uh, things, objects, uh, eroding here and there, doing a lot of incredible powerful things because of the force of water. Um, there was flooding in different low spots throughout the community. Um, there was wind blowing at different times. Uh, all crews were dispatched uh, to differing calls of the police. Uh, put out his officers to protect and secure and in terms of uh, a property and make sure people were safe in houses that were a couple houses were threatened uh, police made sure that they were secure and there was nobody in there those houses that might be in jeopardy um, the businesses where water started um, potentially occurring they checked them out for security uh, there was traffic direction going on and watchful and fire was getting calls and the firefighters were out and making numerous, numerous calls. Um, the public works people plunged out into the, where these roads started washing away to take, take uh, preventive steps to keep people from going into roads where it would be dangerous for them to. Uh, some people got cut off in terms of some of those roads that were blocked uh, on our New Hampshire side. Um, knowing that the Vermont side was being hit, hit even worse, um, and knowing that the water was rising at this occasion, there were some strange things happen. Um, uh, you never think about what's, what can be floating, but propane tanks can float. And there was propane tanks in the river, and there was step, steps taken by our police department, our fire department, our public works. We're all working at dealing with things that might propose jeopardy or risk to exposure to people. Um, these events were going on. They started on Sunday. They went throughout. Our people worked. Uh, right through the night, right into the evening. Um, some worked over.